Holocaust 2000, tonight at 11.30. Hee Haw will not be seen tonight, so we may bring you the following special. Wish TV's Evening with the All-Stars. Hee Haw will be seen next Saturday at its regular time. Ray Haroon won the first Indianapolis 500 back in 1911. And in the three generations between Haroon's win and Rick Mears' win last year, Indianapolis has taken its place in the national sports spotlight. It's the newest city in the prestigious National Football League and the only NFL team to play in front of over 100% of stadium capacity. Indianapolis has hosted the most successful sports festival to date, which firmly set the foundation for the awarding of the 1987 Pan American Games to Indianapolis. We've become the city for Olympic trial. Each summer, the best clay court tennis players in the world and best women golfers earn their living in our city. But if one sport sits at the top, it's basketball. From Hoosier Hysteria to the NCAA Finals, Indianapolis is basketball. Three times, the champions of the American Basketball Association called Indianapolis home. Just last summer, the largest crowd to ever see a game filled the Hoosier Dome for the U.S. Olympic team's exhibition with stars from the NBA. And tomorrow, once again, Indianapolis will command center stage nationally as the world's best basketball players take to the floor of the Hoosier Dome. An evening with the All-Stars. Brought to you in part by Republic Airlines, the airline that makes you feel like flying. And by your Indiana Ford dealers. Now, live from the Indiana Convention Center, here's Ed Harding. Good evening. You are looking live inside the Indiana Convention Center. The practice uniforms have come off. The tuxedos have come on. It is time to party before the All-Star Game tomorrow. In fact, tuxedos coming on so well that Jim Barber and I decided to wear one tonight. For the next 60 minutes or so, we'd like you to sit back and relax and enjoy with us some of the events in our city today. We will take you to the slam dunk competition where Terrence Stansbury of the Indiana Pacers did so well. We'll take you to the old timers game this afternoon, the memories of the great names of basketball's past. And we'll show you practice this morning where it was a chance rather than working on X's and O's to say hello to old friends that you've seen along the road to the NBA. All that's coming up. But first, you know Jim Barber who's joined us here, a name bird is probably going to be one of the most and most greatly received names tomorrow when he's introduced in the Hoosier Dome for the All-Stars. Yet, you have a story about another fellow by the name of Bird, not Larry, but a relation. Fill us in, please. I wonder if the people in French Look, French Lick realized at the time that Larry was going to be a legend because I think there's a possibility of another legend coming up. Larry Bird is here for the NBA All-Star Game. Eddie Bird is back home. Now, Eddie is Larry's younger brother, and last night he played in front of his big brother hoping to follow in the footsteps of what already is a great career. He'll go baseline, throws up a runner. It falls as time runs out. I don't believe it. While he hungers not for the limelight, it's the things that he does that puts him right square in the middle of it. And that can make it tough for anyone associated with Larry Bird, like his younger brother, Eddie. But what Eddie has been doing as of late gives many the impression he may be following in the footsteps. Well, there's many things that you can see 10 years ago in Larry and that you can see in Eddie. Eddie's body built is about the same, but it's hard to compare him because Eddie is uh, a year older as a junior, and Larry had that particular size as a uh, senior, just a little bit bigger. A kid's uh, rebound real well. He rebounds uh, sort of like it, uh, Larry did as a uh, senior. It's really hard to compare him because of the age difference, but uh, a lot of times his passing, once in a while you'll see characteristics of Larry and some of his, uh, his temperament once in a while, you know, he's a real go-getter. Last night in French Lick, Indiana, Eddie Bird, a 6'5 junior, scored 24 points, had 17 rebounds, six assists, five steals, and one block shot. It was one of his finest moments as a high school star for Springs Valley, the same place where older brother Larry starred in the 70s. And it was only appropriate that the elder bird was there to view it all. Well, he plays base like I do, you know. He's not very quick and he can't jump that well, but uh, <laughs> he knows the game of basketball, and last night uh, he put on a good show. The thing about uh, Larry is he was a little bit stronger. Eddie, uh, just a little bit uh, weaker physically and couldn't do all the things that he would uh, like, we'd like for him to do. And I think another year he'll be a little bit stronger and he'll be able to 
play a little bit stronger on the inside and outside. Holland was there when Larry was growing up and playing at Springs Valley. He's seen the growth and development of the older bird into an eventual star at Indiana State and now with the Boston Celtics. History may be repeating itself nearly 10 years later as young Eddie begins to make a name for himself. Again, keep in mind he is 6'5 and only a junior and his coach says for the most part perhaps a little ahead of Larry's pace when he was in high school. Uh, is that all he did with those statistics? Wouldn't he have an average night last night or something? <laughs> I spoke to Larry today in practice and I asked him about his brother, should the Pacers draft his brother, you know, this year in the NBA draft? He said, no, you know, I'd like him up in Boston with me. <laughs> I think they'd have to make one league for the Celtics and then a, a league for the rest of the NBA. I wonder if they happened. regret not drafting Larry and perhaps now with the, with the blood say coming along. Certainly that is another topic to discuss. <laughs> when Evening with the All-Stars continues, we'll take you to the practice floor for this morning. So please stay with us. The congestion at some of the nation's busiest airports is pretty bad. Roger, 290. You're 18th for takeoff. If you've had enough of this, Republic Airlines thinks you deserve perks. That's why Republic flies to the major business destinations through uncongested airports. And that's one of our nicest perks. With our ultimate super savers, you'll feel like flying more than ever before. Okay, Kroger, you say there's a difference. Then show me. Yeah! The Floral Shop! Where the difference is a giant selection of Valentine flowers from America's largest florist, Kroger. Wow! And another difference, Kroger Floral Experts to help you pick the perfect Valentine gift and wrap it just so. So for Valentine's Day, feel the difference. Go Krogering. Red, pink, yellow, or Sonia long-stemmed roses, just $29.95 a dozen. Trudy Yarnell. I think our commitment to news coverage really proves itself on the weekend. That goes for sportscaster Jim Barber and meteorologist Tom Magnuson. Big stories do happen over the weekend. The Pan Am game announcement from Mexico City. And weather and sports are always important. Newsfeed Network has named Channel 8 Sports Station of the Year. All around, I'd say it's nice to be part of a winning team. The News 8 Weekend Edition. We're the team. We're Indiana's own. Normally, a practice is just that, a practice, but not today. Only in the All-Star game do Robert Parrish and Michael Jordan walk into the same locker room. Michael, Michael! Uh, shoot around, Splash. Just let me know when you want to stop. Only in the All-Star game does K.C. Jones coach a team with Larry Bird and Julius Irving, as well as Parrish and Jordan. Yeah, it's very exciting. Uh... You know, to be in the, guy, in the locker room, I'm glad they put me in the corner. You know, I, I can look at everybody else and admire everything's going on. While the doctor arrives, stopping to say hello on the way to his dressing space, the West takes to the floor for practice, led by former Pacer, now Denver Nugget, Alex English. West has lost five All-Star games in a row. To halt that, they bring a virtual weapons arsenal. Ralph Sampson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, George Gervin, Magic Johnson. The man in charge of molding all of this is Pat Riley of the Lakers. Swing it now. Let's swing it. Bring it back to ice. Here we go. Up to ice. Let's swing it all the way around to the three-man. Here we go. 
basics, something they can balance the floor with uh, when it gets a little crazy. Um, but this is a game in which they'll use their quickness, their instincts, uh, and their intelligence uh, and their greatness. So uh, we will do a few things to try to exploit uh, what I think is a size advantage in the backcourt and also, and to some extent, up front. Uh, and whatever we have designed and choreographed, uh, uh, we will try to exploit our size. Size that includes a starting backcourt tandem of George Gervin at 6'8 and Magic Johnson at 6'9. Perhaps the medicine needed to stop the West's five-game losing streak. Do you feel like the American League in baseball, you know, are you ever going to break this streak? Well, we feel that we are. Uh, it's just a matter of us uh, just getting over the hump. We've been there every year, but we just ain't, we just didn't get over, whether it's by two or three points or overtime or something. You know, we just haven't got over the hump. But we feel that um, this is our year, and we're going to try to go out and win it this season. Strategies and theories, are, are those kinds of things important in an all-star situation? It's kind of difficult to mesh as one unit, your, your collective talents, is it not? Well, you really don't have a, 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 a theory. A strategy is just to outscore the other team. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it, because you, you're so high-powered, you have so many uh, super, super players, and uh, it just go to your strength. Um, wherever, you know, if you have a big men, go inside. If you have guys who can shoot from outside, let them take their shots. So everybody just uh, do what you normally been doing. But each one you want to win. Uh, no, you don't really relate to what's going on ahead of you. You just figure you have a chance to win this game and, you know, not worry about what's gone before. The biggest uh, factor in the last five games for the Eastern Conference is that they have had more overall quickness uh, at uh, particular times during the games. And uh, even though they are quick again this year, I, I thought in the past with Andrew Tony and Maurice Cheeks, uh, uh, and Moncrief and Michael Ray Richardson and players like that, that they can go with a real quick lineup with good overall size, too, that used to do in the West. So we want to be conscious of not letting them out quick. So you have to be conscious of that, otherwise they'll run right by it. And at the same time, try to utilize the fact that we are quick and big. So I think both teams can put very quick teams out on the court, and I'll be conscious of that this year. One more time. One more time. That one more time Riley is referring to is another trip down the floor for perhaps the biggest lineup you could ever see on a floor. Kareem at center at 7-2, Akeem at 7 feet, and Sigma at 6-11 up front with Larry Nance, 6-10, and Ralph Sampson, 7-4 in the backcourt. <laughs> I don't think the players would uh, would want that. I, I would never do that because it could embarrass them. And, uh, I'm thinking about going with size at times, and, and also we have a team that, that is a very quick team. We can have put five players out on the court and really get up and down the floor. So I'll exploit in the first three corner, quarters, or experiment, excuse me, in the first three quarters with certain combinations to see how they work. And, and then as most all-star games uh, go, they're decided in the fourth quarter. Go! You may never see those five on the floor together again, but it was fun to watch. East coach K.C. Jones doesn't have the Redwoods Riley has. At seven feet, Robert Parrish is his tallest player. But he does have three-time MVP Moses Malone, one of the league's most dominant centers, the spectacular Dr. J, and the man many consider the top point guard of the game today, Isaiah Thomas, who loves these All-Star weekends. Yeah, it's always an excitement. Uh because you, you recognize as one of the, the top 24 players playing anywhere in the world. And, uh, you know, it, it's an honor because your, your skills and, your, and the way you play basketball is appreciated and recognized. Isaiah handed out 15 assists in last year's All-Star game. This year, one of the guys he'll be looking for will be Bernard King, who is merely averaging nearly 31 points per game. I think it's just uh, taking advantage of our, of our offensive system, knowing where I'm going to get the basketball and then developing moves in that area. Uh, and that's what I've done over the summer months. I've improved as a player. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, I like to think you don't play at the same level for your entire career. I like to think that you go up and you continue to improve. 
you know, in a basketball court when you have such great players playing uh, with you as you do, uh, it's kind of hard to make a bad decision with the basketball because whoever you give the ball to is very capable of converting two points or making another play for someone else. Coach K.C. Jones, Isaiah's East teammates, and the rest of the civilized world know what this guy can do. Larry Bird plays for the Boston Celtics now, but takes a ton of pride in his college and high school days right here in Indiana. Well, you know, when you grow up, everybody wants to be a professional basketball player, and uh, I think Indiana supports your basketball uh, when you start in the first grade on through. Uh, Hoosier hysteria is definitely here, and uh, I think uh, because of that, it's made me what I am today. Uh, the fans have perceived me very well, and they received me very well. And, I've always enjoyed playing basketball, and I've always enjoyed staying in Indiana around my home. Uh, I like the small community life, and uh, you can find that here in Indiana. Even in the city, you can sort of find it if you want it. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud uh, that I, I am from Indiana, and uh, I really haven't seen no place any better. Back on the floor, lest you think practice is all business, it isn't. On this play, Malone and Jordan wrestled for the ball. On this, Kareem misses a dunk and gets a mock cheer. Today, it's all smiles. Tomorrow? still smiles but it's business too Jordan did that often in practice today I'm joined now by a man who what I would call at least one half of the men to be Herb Simon one half of the Pacer ownership and Herb I have to say congratulations I have heard nothing but compliments from the media out of town about the way they have been received in this town it's almost like the game is anticlimactic. I don't want to say that. What have you done? You're a virtual rookie at owning an NBA team. How have you all of a sudden become the firm foundation in the league? Well, I think our organization really got behind it, but more important than that, Carolyn Blitz and uh, her troop of about almost a thousand volunteers worked so hard. I think our, our community is so geared to uh, putting its best foot forward. Uh, going all the way back to the uh, sports festival uh, that it almost comes second nature to this community and I'm so proud of our volunteers and of our Pacer organization uh, it's just uh, doing our job and putting Indianapolis with its best foot forward. Was this a target you went after when you first decided to take over this team? Was it a target, the All-Star game, was that something you wanted to have relatively quickly in your in your ownership? Um, as you recall, when we first took over the ownership, uh, we were involved in a flip and a lot of other things were happening. And I think Bob Sadius mentioned to me, why don't you ask him about the All-Star game? So not knowing what I was asking about, I just said, hey, listen, uh, we'd like to you know, have the All-Star game in Indiana, Indianapolis. And sure enough, some months later, the commissioner showing great courage with his rookie owners uh, <laughs> gave us the honor. Is there a disappointment, uh, I'm sure this is a rhetorical question, a disappointment in not having a player on the floor tomorrow, although you did have a representative in the slam dunk competition today? Um, uh, certainly we would have liked to have a player uh, represented, but I think uh, more important, the integrity of the balloting system is really what counts. Uh, you're seeing what the fans and the coaches really believe are the 12 best players on each in each league, and uh, that's what we're coming out to see, not, uh, not local players. We see them all the time. However, it would have been nice to have a local play, and maybe next year. Herb, thank you for taking time out to join us. Herb Simon, who is, in my opinion, one of the finest owners in professional sports. Thank you for coming with us, Herb. Thank you very much. Stay with us. Evening with the All-Stars continues. make decisions. People depend on me to be there and to make the right call. That's why deciding to buy the new Ford Tempo was one of the best calls I ever made. Because in Indiana, basketball season is snow season. With front-wheel drive and rack and pinion steering, Tempo's what I need to get me to the game. Plus, great styling and comfort makes Tempo an all-around good call. Ford Tempo is one decision of mine that they'll never question. See your Indianapolis Ford dealer today. At Drexel, we're a warehouse supermarket for kitchens. You betcha, Ken. We're the kitchen experts. Like Marilette cabinets, they're pre-finished and pre-assembled for easy do-it-yourself installation. Or use our bonded and preferred contractors. Save up to 40% on Marilette kitchens. And at Drexel, they're in stock. Let us give you a free estimate. Ken, don't forget our free 90-day financing. Come on in. Let us show you how easy and affordable a new kitchen can be. Drexel, and maybe we've come to know and trust. 
Peter B. Jones and Gary Collins too, they're our guys. I watch Wish TV in the afternoons for our guys. For action and variety, that's great. For back-to-back -back fun, it's Channel 8. They're our guys. Barnaby Jones at 4, followed by Gary Collins at 5, weekdays on Indiana's own Wish TV. I watch Barnaby Jones and our magazine for our guys. Back when I was a boy, all we had was a one-room schoolhouse. What the teacher called truancy was just playing hooky. And if we got caught skipping school, we'd feel the hickory stick for sure. Education reporter Leslie Olson looks at the growing rate of truancy in today's schools, the legal questions, and how teachers are tackling the problem in a special report on truancy starting Monday at 6 on News 8. Sounds like a smart idea. <laughs> Welcome back to Evening with the All-Stars. I think by now you can sense that this isn't just one game, it's a whole weekend. Tomorrow in the Hoosier Dome, adjacent to the building that we're in, the current stars of the NBA will have their day. But today, it was those who made the game great to stand in its spotlight. And to report, we bring in our colleague, a New York Knicks fan, Mike Andervan. A locker room filled with memories, and the talk is of old times. But they were always, always had somebody with their hand on you. Yeah, they don't play defense like that anymore. Preparing for yet one more game. The years may have dwindled the skills, but not the enthusiasm. But before the game is a time for basking in the glow and renewing old friendships. Uh, one of the things that's um, real disappointing about retirement is that you leave a lot of guys that you've been accustomed to being with for so many years, and then all of a sudden you've completely got them out of your life. And I think that something like this here kind of rekindles that kind of flame and uh, brings back old memories. Even limbering up takes longer than it used to, even for a relatively young old-timer like Pistol Pete Maravich. I haven't run up at court but once in, since June, so I wouldn't consider myself in shape. The reunion could fit a Hall of Fame. Some, like Rick Barry, look like they could still play today. Uh, there isn't anything I've ever done in my life where I don't go out and at least attempt to do as well as I can. Unfortunately, as well as I could do right now, it's not going to be what I used to do, but it'll be a good time. George Yardley is the senior, senior citizen, 65 years old, the first player in the NBA to score 2,000 points in a season. That was in the 50s. Today, he talks about the game in the 80s. Now they have magic and bird, that type of thing, where they do everything. They can rebound, they can pass, they can shoot. We didn't have that. We had, uh, you know, all specialists. And uh, now it's, uh, you know, if the guy can't do everything, he can't play in this league. Walking into this locker room is like walking back into your own memory, a fact not lost on heroes like John Havlicek. That's the uh, fun of this whole thing because the framework of the NBA was laid many, many years ago and the players who really didn't get in on the success of the limelight and that type of thing are going to be here today and people get a chance to see them. For some, today was a chance to recapture old glories. For others like Tom and Dick Van Arsdale, today was a homecoming. We're inside Manuel High School, and it has been 24 years since the twins, Tom and Dick Van Arsdale, were here. Yet, you don't have to go far to see or hear their impact on Manuel basketball. Hi, everybody. This is Dick Higgs speaking to you now from the Butler Fieldhouse. Here are the starting lineups. First of all, from the Manuel Redskins, it'll be Tom and Dick Van Arsdale at the forwards. Larry it's Short, the dream of seven. every high school and basketball player to reach this point, the state finals. The, the year is 1961, it's the afternoon session, and the Van Arsdales and their manual teammates have realized their dream. It was fun to share it. After all, as twins, they shared everything equally. When I gave them their orange juice when they were babies, I would, I would pour it out in a glass and I would look down to be sure I had the same amount in each glass. <laughs> and it's manual 27, Tell City 25, as Tell City with 35 seconds remaining in the second quarter, is trying to clear the, close the gap. Underneath it goes. A shot by Tom Van Arsdale was good, and he was fouled. Our grandfather put a goal up in the backyard, and it was a way for us to entertain each other, and we just grew into it. Many people felt that they would never make the NBA, but I think they were so determined. They had such determination that, that they made it. Underneath to Tom Van Arsdale, his shot good. When you saw him on the court during the course of a ball game, could you tell them apart? Well, I could tell them by their numbers. 
And then when they were at Indiana Branch, you put red socks on one and white on the other. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he do that? So he could tell them apart, because he didn't know either. The problem with that is that when we got in trouble, they wouldn't even worry about telling us apart. They just spanked both of us, and that took care of that problem. We had a tendency to try to get the other one in trouble and, and not get the blame for it. Cobb bringing it into the offensive court, and it goes to Tom Bernardsdale. He can't get a shot. He feeds it to Larry Short. His shot was no good. A tip up underneath by Dick Bernardsdale is good. They'd play basketball out here in the backyard, and, and one would get mad at the other. I don't know what about. <laughs> but they'd chase each other through the house. <laughs> and they were so large that you felt like the walls were going to come in. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, I, I cannot begin to describe how mad we got at each other. And we would literally, we have an aunt who would come and stay with us in the summer. And she quite honestly thought there were times we were going to kill each other. I think it was tough, and that's, the I think, the most important thing in helping us along the way in our development athletically because I always knew that there was someone out there who was going to give me the game that I needed, that was going to be able to beat me if I didn't play well. There wasn't a lot of competition when we grew up, so Tom and I played basically one-on-one -on -one basketball, and you just literally beat each other up, and I think that really helped our development. Incidentally, Manuel reached the finals in 1961 and had a seven-point lead with just over a minute to play. They lost the lead and the game to Kokomo in double overtime. Indeed, a hard-learned lesson, but not the only bump on their basketball road. That was sad, but, and then when we lost to Michigan at IU, but I feel that perhaps um, you don't always win in life. And another time, when Dick was playing with the Phoenix Suns against the Boston Celtics in the final game of the NBA, they lost that, Phoenix lost that game. So it just seems that the boys were not supposed to win in tight places like that. It was also a homecoming for this man, lest we forget. Bob Slick Leonard left us many happy memories with the old ABA Indiana Pacers. Now he's on the outside looking in and missing the game. Sure, I miss the camaraderie. I miss being around the people, sports people. And uh, uh, one day I might get involved again. Back at the helm again, he was the losing coach today. But returning here was victory enough. Before the game, former Pacer Mel Daniels joked about his lack of fitness. Got him in about six minutes worth of shape. Six minutes, is about it. What happens when a coach asks you to do the seventh minute? Uh, time out, back to back. <laughs> Lack of conditioning didn't stop him from scoring eight points. This was also very special to Mel Daniels. Yeah, it does. I mean, I feel like I was uh, uh, one of the people who helped put this building together. You know, and it's always a special feeling to, to participate in something that had a little something to do with. With Daniels, his former teammate Roger Brown, and again the jokes. My chest, my lungs, my legs, you name it, I noticed the difference. Beneath the humor, appreciation that he has been remembered. The homecoming is complete with the arrival of one more Hoosier star athlete, the biggest star of all, Oscar Robertson. The neighborhood where Oscar Robertson lived his senior year in high school hasn't changed much. Oh, it has gotten a little older, but it will always remember. 29 years ago, you didn't have to travel too far from Oscar's neighborhood to be in the place. It was here in what was then known as Butler Fieldhouse that Robertson and his addicts teammates beat Lafayette Jeff to win the state championship and finish 31 and 0. You can still see the smile on Robertson's face after the Jefferson game. He scored 39 points that night. It was then a state record. That record has since been broken. But more importantly, Robertson's team won it all. His coach in high school was Ray Crow, who truly knew what he had right from the start. When I first saw him, that was when he was in the eighth grade playing on the junior high team. Uh, you know, he showed his qualities then. Uh, he played on the first uh, junior high championship team that they had here in the city. The physical talent, the uh, jump, uh, good ball handler, uh, good basketball sense, but on top of that, he had uh, great leadership ability, you know. He was able to get a lot out of the other kids. Robertson has always been one of those no-nonsense workaholic type guys who took off after a goal and never let up 
even when he got there. The guy worked at it and worked hard at it. I mean, he had a lot of natural ability, but he worked hard to develop what he had. But uh, he's the first guy to practice and the last one to leave. Uh, I think sports have been a lot for our country, and in, in, in the end, it's special to me anyway. And I think this is the greatest sports state in the country. Finally, game time. The legends come to life. The action moves a little slower than it once did. The tummy's a tad bit larger. But every so often, all at once, the magic returns. The magic of Big O as he glides gracefully down the court. So I'm not going to play like I did when I was 21 years old. I don't think any of the guys are going to. So we'll, we'll play it. We try to not embarrass anybody, really. Put on a nice little show. We were right about Rick Barry. He can still play. And Earl Monroe, Earl the Pearl of old, leading scorers like he did in the days at Baltimore and New York. In all, 20 former greats take the court. Pettit, Cousy, Hawkins, Bellamy, and on and on. Oh, by the way, the East old-timers won the game, but that's not really important. Financially, this kind of game gives the old-timers a chance to share in the financial bonanza that's the NBA today. But mostly, this game is for the fans. Thanks, guys. A lot of these guys are old bandit stuff and barely getting around, but they're putting on a good show for us. You know, those, those athletes have that competitive spirit. I don't care how old you get, you're going to be competitive. Baby. Some in the crowd never saw these legends play. It's hard to convince them there was basketball before Dr. J. Can you believe they were great players in their day? Well, that's what everybody tells me, so I guess they were. But we remember, who could forget? Those are fun memories, a fun thing to watch. When we continue with Evening of the All-Stars, we'll talk what state of affairs is the NBA in. We'll talk about that, so please stay with us. congestion at some of the nation's busiest airports is pretty bad. Roger, 290. You're 18th for takeoff. If you've had enough of this, Republic Airlines thinks you deserve perks. That's why Republic flies to the major business destinations through uncongested airports. And that's one of our nicest perks. With our ultimate super savers, you'll feel like flying more than ever before. Lenny, however did you get in this club? Simple, Baxter, the front door. Who recommended you? Ah, uh, that guy. That, that's the chairman of... Right. We got to talking about MCI, how they're saving businesses millions versus AT&T on long-distance calls. Your tea, sir. Thank you, Chives. For instance? Well, nearly 400 of the Fortune 500 trust MCI. MCI even has Watts lines. Really? How could I have been so unaware? To some, Baxter, it's a natural gift. <laughs> Call MCI now. Creek moist winter green tobacco. It's cut a little rougher. For some, their teenage years will be their best years. For others, it will be their last. Sometimes it's not that you want to die, it's just you don't want to go on living anymore. Every minute of every day, a young person tries to commit suicide in this country. After a while, it just, you have nowhere to turn. We urge you to watch a special edition of our magazine, Teenage Suicide. 
we can work towards suicide prevention. Together. Monday at 5 on Wish TV. Welcome back to Evening with the All-Stars. So far you've seen this morning's practice, you've seen the old-timers game, you've seen what has happened. Where is the game going, and is it going in the proper direction? It's the time to bring our media experts in here and kind of have a round-robin discussion about that. Jan Hubbard, who covers the NBA for well, the Sporting News, is with us, and Bob Sakamoto is my furthest guest on the right from the Chicago Tribune covering the Chicago Bulls. Bob, let me start with you. You're in, a, in a Chicago, a major market area. People say it'd be great if the Chicago team could make it to the players. It'd be great for the NBA. Do you agree with that theory that, that we need the, the major market teams in the playoffs? I think uh, television-wise they do, because uh, you look at CBS, the games of the week, it's Los Angeles, it's Boston, it's New York. Uh, it's a big market, Chicago, because of their lousy record last year, isn't on TV, but uh, with Michael Jordan now, they're a big attraction. I would think the league is very excited that Michael is here. He's, uh, he's by far the most exciting rookie in the game today. Everywhere Michael has gone this year, and I've traveled everywhere with him, He's drawn just about a full house. Golden State, Cleveland, places where 5,000 people might come out to watch a basketball game. He's drawn a full house at those places, and he's got a charisma that's just taken over this league. He really has. Jan, the television ratings seem to be up. Do you, do you have a feeling as to why it, maybe more people are paying attention to professional basketball? At least the attendance here in Market Square Arena is up. Attendance seems to be up all over the league. Well, this is an unusual situation uh, throughout the NBA. I mean, the Pacers are really respected for the job that they've done because they have marketed a bad team. Uh, I think that the thing that some people in the NBA are waiting for right now is how long these fans will have patience and will they continue to support this team if they don't win. But overall, the image of the league has improved a lot. I think that it started with Larry Bird and Magic Johnson coming into the league together. It's had some good championship series with the, with the glamour teams, Philadelphia and Los Angeles. And they've, they've uh, been very... Uh, Forward, or they've been very aggressive about solving their problems, uh, having a drug agreement that was that was uh, co-authored by the Players Association, a salary cap, which shows they're trying to do something about the craziness that they created in the first place. So they kind of solved their own problem, and these things have all helped them. People seem to be pretty positive about the NBA right now. Sometimes that salary cap, though, can be can be, be a little bit deceiving. I suppose there are creative ways around it. You're you're a prime example. Your franchise in Dallas, you you work with them fairly closely in that area down there. That. Is that as attractive a team to the to the fans of the South? I remember an old rap I used to hear was said, basketball's not a Southern sport. Yeah, well that's, I never did, uh, I grew up in Dallas and, and I never have agreed with that. It was not as, a, uh, as important of a sport as football and was not, uh, the people weren't as, as, uh, as crazy about it as they are certainly in Indiana and other parts of the country. But there were basketball supporters down there. Uh, right now I think that they feel like the, it's about maybe 60-40 or 50-50 with people who have come into the area and, and they are within, the Mavericks are within 500 of averaging a sellout. They average 16,500, the arena seems 17,000. So the people are supporting the franchise and they're very excited about it. I asked that in advance of next year's All-Star Game, which is in Dallas. That's in Dallas too and, uh, and they are very determined to do a better job than Indiana has and, and I think that right now the way Indiana is uh, putting on this All-Star that they see they have their work cut out. From the, they have 11 <laughs> staff members here. Uh, uh, watching the Indiana staff uh, do this All-Star game. Bob, are there too many teams in the playoffs? Do we play an 82-game season to eliminate nobody? It sort of seems that way. It's, it's watered down the prestige and the status of being a playoff team now because only seven teams don't make the playoffs. Um, but the way the league seems to be going, uh, you get into the playoffs, you make more money, the franchises are healthier. Uh, Commissioner David Stern was telling me yesterday, three years ago there were six teams in the NBA that made a, made a profit, that showed a profit. And th by the end of this year, he expects anywhere from 15 to 18 teams to be making money. So it's a way, I guess, of generating revenue for the league. Okay, guys, let's take this perspective, send it out of the floor with Jim Barber standing by with a coach of an NBA team that's been playing some pretty good basketball of late. James? Thank you, Ed. Stan Albuck's done a great job in New Jersey. Of course, most of his players have missed most of the season, and the team's still able to stay above sea level. But tonight, he's here enjoying himself. That, that's a little different, isn't it, Stan? Well, it really is, uh, Jim, because I got up uh, this morning in Indianapolis, and it felt like I had to go to a game. And I said, <laughs> gee whiz, now all i got to do is watch the old-timers and certainly watch the great game that it's going to be tomorrow. What about the game tomorrow? Can you pick a winner and, and put your finger on it? Well, it's going to be difficult because I think the West has improved, but uh, being in the Eastern Conference, i got to go with the East again, and they have uh, won, I think, about the last three out of the four. And uh, Larry Bird and, and Dr. J are certainly great forwards, and they're going to be challenged by the young people over there, uh, Akeem and, and Sampson. 
and I think, of course, uh, perhaps the greatest offensive player of all time in uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, too. Pat Riley of the Lakers, who heads up the West, is teased about starting the skyscrapers, all three of them. Uh, if you were coaching the East and had heard that, how would you react? <laughs> With panic, believe me, unless you had somebody to combat those people. And I think, you know, Bird and the Doc will. But I expect an exciting basketball game. And what better city than Indianapolis because they have so many good fans. It's nice to have you with us. You've done a great job with this team. Good luck. Second half of the season. Okay, Jimmy. Thank you. Stan Albeck of New Jersey. Back to you, Ed. Thanks, Stan. Thanks, Jim. Well, Bob and Jan, thank you. I think everything looks to be fairly nice. I'll sit back and watch the All-Star game. You have to pick a winner because Stan said the East was going to win. Now you have to pick a winner. I think that uh, that Pat Riley uh, has plans to play uh, in his the last team he put on the floor today was uh, had had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Hakeem, and uh, Jack Sickman forwards. Kareem was at center. He had uh, Larry Nance at uh, shooting guard, and he had Ralph Sampson as the point guard. So he, uh, I think that this year the West coaches did a better job of putting a bigger team on there with their all with their uh, reserves, and so I think Sigma. Akeem and these guys are going to have effect. If, if, I, if you had to pin me down right now, I'd say the West is going to win this year. One to one, Bob. You're the, you're the tiebreaker. I got to go to the East. They got five <laughs> of the six best teams in the league in the Eastern Conference right now. It is, it's loaded this year. The Eastern Conference, bet on the Eastern Conference. Okay, we'll find out which one of these two is the expert uh, sometime tomorrow afternoon around 5. Thanks for joining us, guys. The evening with the All Stars continues, and I know you want to see the slam dunk competition, so stay with us. GM has just raised their new car prices. Chrysler has raised their prices too, but Ford holds the price line on all its 1985 cars. Front wheel drive, Tempo, and Escort. LTD and LTD Crown Victoria, no increase. No increase on EXP. Reduced price, Mustang LX. Even Ford Thunderbird. The best built American cars and the best new car news in 1985. No price increase. See your Indiana Ford dealer today. Welcome to Creston, Iowa. Population 8,429. Right now, everybody's pitching in to get ready for an annual event. And representatives of the town's biggest business are playing an important part. When this business is healthy, its workers buy clothes and cars. And that makes Creston healthy. The business is agriculture. It's the two million farmers of America who keep Creston and thousands of towns like it alive. Farmers buy the products and services they need locally, working as partners with businesses like farm supply dealers. When farmers do well, their spending creates jobs here and across the nation. In fact, over 20 million jobs depend on farmers. So the lifeline of agriculture that keeps Creston alive reaches out to touch a lot of us. This message is brought to you by Dual Herbicide on behalf of the American Corn and Soybean Grower. 91 Bravo, proceeding on rescue training mission. One weekend a month, you can take off for the beach, the mountains, or a drive in the country in the Army Reserve. Subject spotted. Be all that you can be. It's no picnic, but it's the kind of excitement no other weekend offers. Mission completed. We're heading home. And you'll still have three weekends a month to take off on your own. Find your future in the Army Reserve. Welcome back to Evening with the All-Stars. I want to take you now from the floor of the convention center to the land that I will never see. The slam dunk competition. Dick Ray was on the scene for it today. Richard and Word, great excitement for Stansbury, and I guess the best guy won in the end. Though. And Indianapolis fans aren't any stranger to slam dunk competition. Of course, it was started back in the ABA and was reincarnated last year in Denver for that NBA All-Star game. One of the first winners ever of the NBA or ABA slam dunk competition in those days was Darnell Hillman of the Indiana Pacers. Well, today, a Pacer did very well. Let's take a look. There was quite a load on his shoulders walking onto the Market Square Arena floor. It was up to Terrence Stansberry to represent the colors of the Pacers and the pride of Indiana. I'm excited. Uh, of course, I, I think that's natural, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it as well. I want to go out there and try to do the best that I can.
the Pacers rookie guard joined an exclusive NBA club today. His initiation involved artistry, creativity, and getting the fans excited. It didn't take long for his 43-inch vertical leap to capture the hearts of everyone. Stansberry proved he belonged on his second attempt, a one-handed 360 that received a perfect score. I think after the first round was over, uh, those individuals' minds probably could have changed immediately because some of the dunks that I did that I didn't really think were too impressive because I had done them so many times, the guys that were sitting there, the participants were like, whoa, Terry, that was great, slapping fives, Orlando Royds and all that. So I feel as though I belong in this group now. I've shown that. But there were some heavy hitters in Stansberry's way. Defending champion Larry Nance of the Phoenix Suns and the grandfather of high risers. From the University of Massachusetts, number six, captain of the Philadelphia 76ers, Julius Pedrante. Once the high fives were over with, Atlanta's Dominique Wilkins got things off on a more serious note. With lots of creativity, Wilkins established himself as the front runner. Chicago's Michael Jordan battled Stansberry for the right to join the Masters in the semifinals, and their competition was so close, both were allowed to move on. Dr. J warmed up by going back to his familiar repertoire, two hands are better than one. But today, the youngsters were twice as nice. Stansbury continued to flirt with perfection, and the crowd was in his favor. The same was true for Dominique. His act continued to be the one to beat. The rookies again found themselves in a battle for the right to meet Wilkins in the finals, and after a scratch, Stansbury was forced to take a conservative approach. Michael Jordan needed a winner, and he came up with one, gliding 15 feet for his first perfect score. Yeah, I thought I wasn't going to make it at one time, but uh, I stretched it out and I did make it. Um, you know, I'm very happy that's a big accomplishment. It was on to the finals for Michael Jordan. Dominique opened with a two-hand reverse, and the margin of victory was being established. Jordan's finale included a reverse cradle dunk, but he was no match for the ending Wilkins came up with. Two perfect scores enabled him to capture the $12,000 first prize. Well, the thing I did this year that I didn't do last year, I had a, a bad finish. I wanted to start out today with a strong finish and a strong ending, and that's what I did today. And I tried to do some dunks that I didn't do last year, and it hit the spots where I wanted to hit, hey, and they went down for me. I tried it, to do it myself, and it was uh, something where I got conservative, and, and the end result was what it was. But I think uh, I'll learn from that. If I'm invited back, I'll go right back to the same individuals that guided me here. But it, it was fun. Just the whole thing was fun. I think it was very competitive. I think the creativity that the fans wanted to see was there. And uh, yeah, I, I just enjoyed being a participant in it. So there are your final standings of brand new champion Dominique Wilkins, Michael Jordan, a rookie in his first competition, very impressive showing, and Terrence Stansberry, what a showing for him. The Pacers do very well. Julia Serving, a former champion in fourth, and last year's defending champion, Larry Nance, finishes up in fifth. It looks like that NBA slam dunk competition is going to be around for a long time. I think it's fun to watch, and I'm glad Stansberry did very well, but Dominique's a regular star and Harding's hero, so keep it up, Dominique. <laughs> Let's send it from up here, back down to the floor. Jim Barber's got Chuck Daly. James? You know, Ed, Chuck doesn't have any of the dunkers in that particular game, but he's got some All-Stars here in the NBA All-Star game tomorrow. You have to feel pretty good about that. Well, I'm excited about it. Last year we had three players in, and this year we have two. We have Isaiah and Bill Lambeer. Bill gets in on the basis of uh, Jeff Rule and not making it, but anytime you can make that 12-man squad, you got to be happy. You know, Coach, this is supposed to be a vacation for you, but if you have a couple of players out there performing, do you still get a little antsy? Yeah, you really uh, are concerned about, I found myself last year, I said, well, I'm going to go and enjoy the game, and you know, it's not that much of a factor, but when you get to the game and your guys are sitting there and playing or not playing, in the case of Isaiah, moving toward becoming MVP last year, I really got excited about it. <laughs> I'll bet you did, winning that game in overtime. One final question, your ball club has done well this year, challenging for the division title, and of course, there's still part of the season left. Uh, how does the shape, the division right now, shape up in terms of the race? Well, Milwaukee's been a surprise to a lot of people, but not to me they're a very solid club we've been chasing them all year we're three games out right now we both have roughly 30 games to go 
Uh, we've had quite a few injuries uh, in a, both of our forwards are going to miss approximately 20 games. Uh, they've been healthy uh, injury free. Uh, but uh, last year it went to the last game on the last night we lost or we would have won it in Atlanta and uh, hopefully we can come close again. Chuck thanks for joining us. I'll take you guys in the race. Thank you very kindly. All right Chuck Daly of the Detroit Pistons down here on the floor back to you Ed. Jim thanks when evening with the All Stars continues we're going to have this guy who is played against all of the All Stars. Take a look at the matchups. We'll start with the coaches we'll rip right through the starters. Are you ready to do that. I think I can handle it. I think you can do a good job with it. Clark Kellogg joins us live with evening with the All Stars. The congestion at some of the nation's busiest airports is pretty bad. Roger 290. Your 18th for takeoff. If you've had enough of this, Republic Airlines thinks you deserve perks. That's why Republic flies to the major business destinations through uncongested airports. And that's one of our nicest perks. With our ultimate super savers, you'll feel like flying more than ever before. It's your Indiana Ford dealers Everything Goes Tax Sales event. Our last chance to get rid of everything in stock before we get taxed. And your last chance to save on a wide selection of new and used cars and trucks. Forget the sticker price. Forget the blue book. Everything goes for less. Top dollar trade-in allowances, easy financing. And your final chance to save before inventory tax time. Everything goes, everyone saves during your Indiana Ford dealers Everything Goes Tax Sales event. But it all ends February 28th. Unless everything's gone. Trudy Yarnell. I think our commitment to news coverage really proves itself on the weekend. That goes for sportscaster Jim Barber and meteorologist Tom Magnuson. Big stories do happen over the weekend. The Pan Am game announcement from Mexico City. And weather and sports are always important. Newsfeed Network has named Channel 8 Sports Station of the Year. All around, I'd say it's nice to be part of a winning team. The News 8 Weekend Edition. We're the team. We're Indiana's own. The year was 1909, and the DeWitt horseless carriage was at its peak. Unfortunately, the DeWitt motor car's turn-of-the-century popularity abruptly ended. You're looking at a modern-day replica of the vintage automobile, and it's again being manufactured in Indiana. I'm Ray Rice, and I'll have a special assignment report on the DeWitt legacy. Wednesday at 6 on News 8. Welcome back to the evening with the All-Stars and Clark Kellogg. Let me put you on the spot. I don't know if I've ever asked you this question. Have you ever played against a player you feel is head and shoulders above any other player that you match up against on the floor? I wouldn't say head and shoulders above because when you talk about the players in the NBA, Ed, you're talking about a very, very fine line between being a very good player and then a great player. So I don't think there's anybody that's head and shoulders above any other player, especially at the forward position. I feel like those are the best athletes in the league. Um, from top to bottom. Let's start with the matchups that you'll see on the floor in the Hoosier Dome tomorrow. We want to begin with the coaches because coaching is so important in this game today. Pat <laughs> Riley of the Lakers, KC Jones of the Celtics. What's the rap you hear on those guys around the league? Well, they both seem to be players, coaches, from what I hear. Um, KC Jones seems to get along well with the Boston Celtic players, as does Pat Riley with the Laker players. So I think when you talk about the All Star game tomorrow, that it's going to be very enjoyable for both players, both teams, because of the coaching situation. Bird says he knows Casey Jones' system well. Play hard and win. It's <laughs> a simple system, isn't it? We'll go from the coaches to the guards, and we begin with this pairing. Gervin for the West, Isaiah Thomas for the East. George is taller, but Isaiah might be the finest point guard in the game. Well, no question about that. Isaiah is definitely the finest point guard in the game when you talk about being a true point guard. Handles the ball well, can score when he has to, gets everybody involved in the offense. Um, the Iceman is a prolific scorer. Um, he can score on anybody. He does it a variety of ways. He can hook the ball. He can shoot it from outside. He can drive. So when you talk about those two guys matching up against each other, you're talking about the premier point guard and one of the premier scorers in the league. Does the size difference mean anything? The seven-inch difference, Gervin being taller? I don't think so. I don't think um, Gervin would get a chance to exploit that difference mm -hmm. in height too much in, the, in an all-star game. If they were playing against each other in the regular season, it might be a little different. Okay, let's go to the next matchup at guard. You'll see Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan, two of the more excitable and exciting players in the game today. Yes, Michael has come into the league and has taken everybody by storm. He's a super player, a super athlete. Um, Magic has been doing it for five years now. He's a great ball handler, tremendous passer, probably the best passer 
in the league, I would think, when you talk about the spectacular passes. He can put the ball through three or four guys and not even phase anybody. Um, Michael Jordan does everything. He handles the ball a lot. He can score from outside. Tremendous athletic ability. So it's going to be an interesting matchup there. The matchup at center I find very intriguing. Moses is as dominating a center as you're going to find in the game. Yet here is Kareem on admittedly the twilight of his career doing so marvelously. Well, Kareem doesn't seem like he's aged a bit. <laughs> he's throwing the sky hook um, relentlessly. Uh, Moses is definitely um, probably the hardest worker in the league when you talk about um, relentless effort on the backboard. I think Moses is going to try to use his physical strength to wear Kareem down, but at the same time, Kareem's, Kareem's seen it all. He's seen the bump and the bruise, and he'll be able to handle it. Interesting matchup. And, in the and he has outscored everyone in the process. At <laughs> forward, Larry Bird and Ralph Sampson matchup. You know, as, as consummate a player as Bird is, he's playing a guy that, that is coming into his own in this league in Sampson. Sampson is 7'4", but he's extremely agile. He can do everything that a guy 6'2 can do. He handles the ball. He can shoot it from outside. He's very, very versatile. Bird, um, you can't say enough good things about him. He rebounds, he passes, he hustles, he scores, he does it all. So you're talking about um, two players that are very versatile, but at the same time you're talking about a center being converted to a forward and a true forward in Larry Bird. Bird's three letters, MVP. The other matchup at forward, of course, the doctor and Adrian Dantley. Is the doc slowing down or is he just as tough today as he's ever been? I think he's just as tough as he's been. Um, I've only played against him for two years previous to this year, but he's very, very good. He still can get the ball in the open floor and do some spectacular things with it. He's just not called upon to do as much. Adrian Dantley, prolific score, extremely strong inside. Okay, you've had a chance to take a look at the matchups. Now you have to pick a winner. I can't let you up the hook without okay, picking a winner. I've got to pick a winner. Well, I'm a little biased. I play in the Eastern Conference, so I've got to go with the guys from the East. Okay, you heard it right here. Clark Kellogg says the East is good. The East is kind of piling up all those totals. You know, Dick Ray and Jim Barber, do you have some thoughts? Do one of you guys want to pick the West? I'll take the West, Ed. I like the skyscrapers. All three of them big guys in there, seven foot, seven foot, eight foot, whatever they are. I have to go with the West, but I think it's going to be another close game. That's traditional, I guess, of NBA All-Star games. I think one guy to watch tomorrow is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He hasn't won an All-Star game in a long time, and he's very hungry to win, as well as Pat Riley. He'd like to win an All-Star game. Another thing, too, it's been said about Kareem, he doesn't play particularly well during All-Star games. You think tomorrow maybe he'll get motivated? I think a lot of the players are taking this game serious. If how many are here is any indication, none of them, I, from what I've seen, are at this party so far tonight, so they're probably back thinking about the game. Ed won't let you get away without a prediction, though. I like the West. It's unanimous over here, Ed. West and West. Well, I'm not going to give you a pick. The game's live on Channel 8 at 1.30. Please join us then. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good night, everybody. An evening with the All-Stars. Brought to you in part by Republic Airlines. The airline that makes you feel like flying. by your Indiana Ford dealers.